Bay Condo Association in Florida, and the average student loan debt per state in America. I read an interesting article today on Yahoo.com, put out by the Miami Herald and written by Rebecca San Juan, titled, Miami Condo Owners Shocked with $21 million Special Assessment, Vote Out President. The author of this article shared information about a property located at 1060 Brickell Avenue in Miami. 605 residents live at this property. Apparently, the president approved a $21 million special assessment without the majority of the building's blessing. The Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation had to send two people to oversee the election of a new president. Here are my thoughts. It sounds like there is a lot of drama going on in this condo association. I encourage you to read the entire article because it gets into specifics about tactics that may have been used in the past, such as muting people on a virtual meeting so things could get more easily approved. It sounds like this condo association now has new leadership after this recent election. I have to wonder how much of that $21 million special assessment they can pare down. If the two buildings in this condo association need a lot of work, it may still be very pricey. Materials and labor have skyrocketed in the past several years. When you have really tall buildings, things get even more expensive. I found this out the hard way when I was getting bids to replace the roof on a tall building years ago. Contractors started telling me about all of the OSHA regulations they need to follow. I vividly remember the contractor telling me about harnesses and tie downs that would need to be used, which would also increase the cost because of the tall building. My heart goes out to these 605 residents in this community. I'm sure they will be on the hook for a lot of money. Maybe it won't end up being $21 million, but I'm sure it will still be expensive. A lot of people think buying a condo is a great idea because they just pay a monthly fee and everything else is taken care of for them. In reality, you are giving your money to a condo association's management company and trusting that they will use that money wisely to keep the exterior of the property and the mechanicals of the property in good shape. A good management company will try to get multiple bids and keep costs down for the owners. A bad management company will just use people they know, basically giving out favors. Some have their own maintenance people, and that can get a bit sketchy. The management company wants to make money from their management fee, but they may also want to make money by inflating the cost of maintenance, and some owners wouldn't even know. I read some of the comments beneath this article. I'll share some of them with you. The first commenter said, I have been on three condo boards and was president of one for two years. It is the most thankless job imaginable. If you are conscientious, it is a job that takes a part of every day and it's filled with stress and it is all for free. It is often very difficult to find people to serve on the board unless they have hidden agendas. A group of owners in my complex came to my apartment and practically begged me to be president. I reluctantly agreed. They changed their tune after I started cleaning up the place, performing long overdue maintenance, and enforcing the rules. The next commenter said, In my early 20s, I saw HOAs and condo boards and co-ops at work and vowed to never be involved with one. I advised all my young friends to heed my warning. Those that did not all lived to regret it. Most remembered my old advice over the years and would mention to me, if I only had listened to you. Bad business all around. Never give up control of your own destiny. The last comment that I'll share with you came from someone who said, anyone owning a condo over 10 years old in Florida needs to sell out and take the loss ASAP. 99.9% .9 of humans cannot think big picture. Condo owners are going to lose their shirt and all these assessments will continue because of what happened in the Florida condo collapse. Likewise, anyone in any other state is in the same boat. Condos are losers. Get out while you can and take the loss. Well, my friends, these commenters always have interesting things to say. 
What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Now this next article is interesting. I read this on ZeroHedge.com, written by Tyler Durden, likely a pseudonym for writers at Zero Hedge, titled, Mapping the Average Student Loan Debt Load by State. According to the author, the total federal student loan debt in the U.S. stands at approximately $1.73 trillion, with 43 million borrowers as of 2023. Student loan debt has increased by about 232.7% since 2009. Now, before I read this article, I thought a big state like California or Texas would have the highest average student loan debt. I was way off. California was actually 14th on the list, and Texas was near the bottom. Number one on the list was the District of Columbia, with an average federal student loan debt per borrower of $54,795. Think about that for a moment. That's a chunk of change, and a lot of interest is going to be charged on that debt. That's also the average, which means some people owe a lot more than that. The extremes often throw off the average. I would have liked to have seen the median data. That would have been far more interesting, but it wasn't reported in this article. Maryland was number two on the list, with $43,692 owed per borrower on average. This was followed by Georgia with $42,026. States near the bottom included North Dakota with $29,647, Iowa with $30,925, South Dakota with $30,928. I worry about some people with student loan debt, especially young people who just graduated. They need to be very careful. This debt may really impact what they can do moving forward in life if they aren't careful. Right now, some people are benefiting from Biden's save plan. They have a reduced payment based on their income level and family size, which makes life more manageable. It's certainly possible Trump will work to get rid of the save plan. This means personal finances could get tight for some people in the future. Only time will tell. I read some of the comments beneath this article. I'll share one of them with you. This commenter said, if I had a teenage son today, I would impress upon him the need to learn a trade. I would help him find a part-time job in a trade he found interesting and satisfying, and I would send him to community college to learn finance and accounting. When he had acquired the relevant certifications and experience, I would assist him in starting his own business. Now I'm going to chime in about that comment. Years ago, I met a guy who had been a minister. He told his son to learn a trade. He told him to go to work for someone for about a year and learn all he could, and then start his own business doing the same thing. His son actually did this. He learned how to install seamless gutters and roofs. Then he started his own business. He did all of the installations himself. When he started growing the business, he hired additional people. Now this guy has a huge company with a large fleet of trucks and a very nice corporate headquarters. He built all of this on his own by listening to the advice from his father. He didn't go to college and take out student loans. He did put in a lot of hard work though. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel. I want to extend a special thanks to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I want to also thank all of my channel members. If you would like to become a channel member, there is a link in the description beneath this video. You can read more about the different membership levels. Please also check out some of the great books that I suggest you consider reading in the description below. I've included Amazon affiliate links to these books. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Stay healthy and wealthy. I'll see everyone in the next video.